Weekly Examiner Documents in Python, a beginner's guide. Hello everyone and welcome to today's tutorial on creating Examiner Documents in Python. I'm excited to guide you through this beginner's guide to generating Examiner structures programmatically using Python. Let's dive in. XML or Extensible Markup Language is a markup language that stores, transmits, and reconstructs data. It defines rules for encoding documents in a format that can be read by both humans and machines. It is built on tags and you can define your tags for your needs. It's also uh, usually used for descriptive purposes. XML is a software and hardware independent tools that supports information exchange between computer systems such as websites, databases, and third party applications over the internet. Here is an overview of uh, the tools that used to construct XML document. Before you get started, let's take a quick look at the tools uh, you'll be using. There are uh, two main libraries for XML document generation in Python, xml.e3.elementary and lxml. Those are powerful and easy to use, but they offer slightly different features and performance. First up, we have the xml.e3.elementary. This library provides a simple and lightweight API for constructing XML trees. Let's take a closer look at how it works. Now I'm going to show you the demonstration how to construct XML using uh, these uh, powerful libraries uh, using Python. Let's get started. To do this, first import the libraries uh, xml.e3.elementary. And we shorten this uh, as a short name uh, like et that is easy to uh, use and write the names. Uh, and instead of using the long name of the library. XML document is a tree-like structure. So every tree has root and child elements. So we first construct the root elements of the XML document. So we use element uh, class uh, in the xml.e3.element tree module. And we pass the name of the root element, for example, data. And uh, so every root uh, may contain the child elements. So uh, now I'm going to create the child elements under this root element. For example, the child element in this case is country. And I'm going to use et.subElement class. And this class is going to take two arguments. That is the root and the new uh, element name, the child element name, for example, country. So every uh, child may contain the attributes or the values. So now I'm going to create the attributes of the child class country. For example, country dot text. Text is an attribute that used to store the text of the, for example, the name of the country under this uh, element. And uh, a root element may contain more than one child uh, element. So I can define one more child element in this root element. So I can copy this and change. So this, for example, city, city is A, and I can change the name of the child, right? So the next step is uh, just create an XML tree structure. So to do this, uh, I'm going to use element uh, tree class. And I just pass the root class into this uh, elementary class as an argument. And finally, let's write this tree structure into uh, a file. This is the write function and pass the name of the, the file. For example, output.xml. And now run this code and let's see the output. All right, output.xml is created. and so this is uh, a simple example how to create an XML document using xml.e3.elementary. So uh, I just started uh, by creating a root element, then add child elements, and finally write the XML to a file. It is uh, straightforward and easy to understand. Next, let's talk about LXML. 
This library offers additional features and performance improvements compared to xml.e3.elementary. Let's see what it can do. Let's import the e3 from xml. And to create this, uh, you can use the same process uh, to xml.e3.elementary, but lxml offers additional features or functionalities like XPath support and schema validation. So uh, I can just copy this and paste here. I don't need to write everything from the scratch because the process is the same and I can change this ET to elementary. Now change this uh, to two uh, to identify uh, which uh, XML document is created using xml.e3.elementary and which one is created by LXML. All right, let's run this again and let's see uh, the outputs of the XML document which are created by using uh, the two powerful libraries using Python. And let's uh, download this and uh, let's see the structure of the XML document. All right, so uh, as I have said, uh, we can uh, use additional properties uh, to prettify the structure of the XML documents in the uh, second one because this provides additional functionalities like uh, pretty print is true and let's see the output all right using the second one that the structure is well defined and uh, the root element is data and the sub element or the child elements are country and city but the uh, first one is just it is not well formatted so uh, uh, so that's the second one uh, just provide these additional functionalities uh, like formatting the XML documents and other, uh, especially schema uh, definition or validation is uh, uh, provided by using LXML. And performance is uh, better than the one we used uh, this one. But the first one is uh, the most commonly using uh, library to parse XML documents because XML document is uh, available across the, across the internet. Uh, it is preferable to store large volumes of data, text data, and you can. Uh, it also contains unstructured uh, data. So we are going to just parse that unstructured data uh, and transform into structured formats uh, for data analysis. Now that we have seen about uh, the two libraries uh, in action, and that. Uh, uh, compare this the the features they provide us and why both are excellent choices for XML uh, document generation. Uh, it is essential to consider your project's specific needs. That wraps up our beginner's guide to creating XML documents in Python. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and informative. Remember to explore further on your own and experiment with these libraries. Thank you for joining me today.